there's different types of ways to build web servers. And I was very interested in deciding on trying to promote this certain style of building web servers, which is with an event loop rather than with threads. And uh, I was a contractor building uh, these sort of event loop systems for, for people. Um, but it was very difficult. You had to do it in C. You, you, you would use these, these kind of archaic ideas. And it, it, somehow people didn't know about it very well. Um, and I was looking for various ways to make this easier for myself. Um, and eventually, it just clicked that JavaScript was a really nice system to pair with this style of, of web server. And um, it was kind of surprising, actually, that, that JavaScript works so well in the same way that, in, in a very similar way to how it works on the web browser, uh, you can build web servers uh, with a single event loop and a single thread and getting these kind of uh, events for various situations. Somebody's connected. Oh, you got a request. And, and so it's, uh, it just turned out to, to work very well. And, and so I, I pursued that. So I uh, gave a presentation in Berlin in uh, November of 2009 kind of presenting Node to the world. It, it was just a little bit more than a demo at that point. Um, and shortly after, uh, Mark Mayo, the, the CTO of Joint, contacted me and was like, hey, we are doing a lot of server-side JavaScript. This sounds great. Like, Let's talk about this. And it turned out that we did have a lot in common. And so I uh, went to work at Joint uh, two months after that and to build out the Node platform. and and uh, see where we could take it. What's great about Node that's different from other platforms is that you are forced to never wait for other servers to respond. So often inside of uh, a web server, you're communicating with a database, or you're communicating with memcache, or you're com communicating with some web service somewhere it's far away, some, somewhere you know, hundreds of milliseconds away. And Node forces you to never wait for the responses. It forces you to continually do new things all the time. And uh, it's kind of weird because you would think that would be extra hard. But because you're forced into doing that always in the same way, it turns out to be easy. And you're just kind of juggling these connections. And it, it kind of makes sense on how to, how to communicate with a lot of different people at the same time. And so Node ends up being a really good language for the internet. You you uh, you can speak to multiple people at the same time, which is which is what uh, servers what servers want to be doing. How this plays into cloud computing is that I think it's it's a really good language for writing servers and. It's this kind of self-contained environment where you you don't have a lot you don't have to deal with things outside the language right you can open connections you can start servers you can spawn new instances of yourself and so you you can you can kind of live inside of this nice cute world where you're kind of guaranteed that you're never going to block you're never going to lock up the server um, and I think this makes a really interesting language for uh, for platform as a service. Uh, to give users the ability to control a server and not have to worry about anything else. They are in this non-blocking environment. They, they speak to multiple people and yeah, that's all they do. Talk to that guy, talk to that guy. Talk to the database, relay some data back to the website. Um, so I, I, I think that for, uh, for cloud computing, it's, it's uh, it's a good language to describe the sort of things that you want to build. PaaS systems today usually mean spinning up a single instance of a software of, of a uh, a single web head that that can respond to things. And uh, services like Heroku and VMware's Cloud Foundry show you that you can kind of s copy those instances out. Uh, and, and scale horizontally out with with demand, and um, 
build build these uh, these scalable uh, uh, web heads that where you just kind of have a copy many times over. Um, that's interesting and good. Um, I think the the future of this is even more in detail is even more interesting where instead of these these web heads just kind of being these dumb interfaces to the world still bound by some backend service um, some applications namely games and chat applications have a more intricate layout where these controller systems need to actually talk to each other right you, you have a chat server that needs to handle more than the number of clients that, that a certain process can handle. You want to spawn a separate one, handle many connections per process, and tunnel the data between them. So I, I think there's there's a future in speaking between these, these web heads and kind of automatically spawning them. Um, and there hasn't really been a system that has, has shown that to work very well. Node is a really neat uh, uh, platform for this because you can just open connections and you can receive responses from from some other from some other uh, point kind of independently of, of what you're doing in your, in your process because you never block because you never like are waiting for somebody to happen you can always kind of receive some update from over there that says hey you know we're, we're under heavy load can you help us out can you redirect customers over here can you can you do this sort of thing so I think in the future we're going to see a very distributed systems uh, sort of uh, PaaS solution where you can spawn up many endpoints and speak to each other.